Oh my god, guys. Guess what? We are award winning. That's right. By association, perhaps. <laughs> By association. Got a BAFTA. He's That's nice for us. He did, yes. He's, I actually can't believe it. Stenders won a BAFTA for Best Continuing Drama, which is a very posh British way of saying soap. Mm. So, yeah, they won. And We won. We won, yes. We congratulated <laughs> ourselves, didn't we? We gave each other a nice glass of champagne, <laughs> chinked each other and, you know, gave each other a knowing nod. John York gave a very interesting speech when he accepted the award mm. on behalf of the soap. Yeah, slightly bitchy-ish. It, the shade, the burn. I mean, they showed a shot of Gail after he said it and you could see the red burn on her arm <laughs> when, when he she said She stayed it. smiling, didn't she? she? They all did. They all just smiled politely. I mean, John York's comment basically was I must also finally thank Kate Oates for leaving Coronation Street. Mm. And I mean, okay. Mm. That's you could take it in two ways. I mean, I guess maybe he's saying thank you for leaving so he could finally leave his job because he was only meant to be there for like three months. So maybe well, he then he's like burning that. the BBC. <laughs> oh my goodness, he's going in all, all directions. Or he meant thanks, thanks Kate for leaving because now Corey's rubbish. So now EastEnders is good enough to win. Well, maybe. But then it's all putting a lot of emphasis on Kate Oates saying that, well, you know, the programme is only as good exactly. It's only as good as what Kate Oates can produce. Mm. I mean, EastEnders always has it in them. They don't, you know, they just need to... Well, they won this at BAFTA and they won it under John York. Yeah, so... because John York did a good year, as we've Well, said... bit. the bits, the episodes they sent off to BAFTA were obviously made for sending to awards. Do you not think that the BAFTA voters or ch- people who choose who wins don't watch EastEnders every week, just like us? <laughs> no. No, OK. That's why throughout the year, they, they sent off the consent episode in the Vic... Yeah. The knife crime funeral episode, like the the specific episodes which were made, they were written so they could be sent off. Yeah, but, but it worked. Coronation Street had some big stories too, and they were nominated in the same category. Mm. I mean, they if you think about it, then he was up against Kate Oates. Well, yeah, that's the thing. And he it? beat her. Mm. So you know, is do we thank Kate Oates for leaving Coronation <laughs> Street, or should we have asked her to stay just so we could continue beating them on our own merit? Oh no. No, it's, it's been a vast improvement under Kate Oates recently. And John Sen, we can't forget John. Oh, absolutely. John Sen's doing, doing an excellent job. I mean, the one thing, I don't know about you, taking away from this week that we've just seen on EastEnders, is the thing that I've taken away from this week is that I really still don't click with Mick. Mick? Mitch. Mitch. Yeah. You click with Mick. Yeah, but not Mitch. Not Mitch. Still not happening. Mm-hmm. And the way that ended on Friday, I was just like, I was, ang- I was annoyed. A, he, yeah, yeah. He still seems to be finding his feet with the character he's playing. Oh, he's got very high opinion, seeing as he's meant to be this guy that's not been there for anyone. Yeah, he ran away, didn't he, and then mm. came back out of the blue, and then insisted that everyone else helped look yeah. after, and then blames Dina, Karen, and then blames. So that really annoyed me. Hmm. Well, we have to talk about that a little bit later on mm. because we're not starting with that yeah. this week. What did you take away from this week? Was your main um, thought i took away that people still haven't really warmed to ben very much there's still a real mm. dislike for him and the the new character direction they're going with him i mean i'm quite enjoying it they they obviously the writers really want him to be involved with a lot of stories because he's always behind walls or hiding behind a tree and listening to like someone yeah. cry or having a conversation yeah but um yeah i'm gonna say i mean the thing is the thing i find least interesting about ben is his take down Phil's storyline mm. like everything else about him is fine it's just that storyline I've just like but they swept it under the carpet though they don't seem to be bothering with that mm, now I don't know they're still Unless they're trying keep... to push it mm. aren't they and of course Ikra and Habib are still these, these big Who? new characters exactly <laughs> just have gone gone into they've just become waitresses in Wolford East they might as well just be extras they're here for summer summer mm. storylines oh, I hope Sizzling so Sizzling summer oh yes <laughs> So, um, oh, thank you for joining us, by the way. We're, we're what, five minutes in and we haven't said hello to you all. So, hello. Thank you for joining us on EastEnders Weekly Podcast. Yes, who are you? I'm Alex. Yes, and I am Ben. Yes. Hopefully you can tell us apart. By our voices. Well, well yes. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> um, so, we're going to be starting off the chat about the Ben and Keanu and Louise and Sharon storyline. Shianu is officially back on the cards. Well, briefly and then... Well, thrown... that was a romantic five minutes there was a yes a tryst but then it then was again forgotten about it was like well no no, no this shouldn't have happened this shouldn't have happened let's not talk about it i was anymore. convinced someone would be listening in the arches when they were going at it Oof. i was convinced 
I, make... I thought they were going to share a shot of someone outside listening. Well, like when Sharon accidentally recorded them <laughs> doing the business last time and made Louise listen to it. I mean, Sharon's been really kind to Louise this week. Every time um, she was doing something generous toward Louise, like helping her out, I, the whole time I just thought to myself, yeah, but Sharon, you manipulated yeah. her. Yeah, two-faced Yeah, cow. six, seven months ago. And you're starting to do it again now with mm. Louise. It's this, I think there's more of an interior motive behind Sharon's intentions for helping Louise, you know, go to the clinic and have the termination of the child more than just, you know, I'm helping her out because she's mm, my stepdaughter. She wants, yeah, she, I know. That's why it's going to be explosive when it does come out, because there's going to be all these underlying, did you make, did you want me to do this mm. because of your own selfish gain? So yeah, that's why it's very well done. Yeah. I'm worried that they've now had her sleep with Keanu about a week or so after Louise. And we had this last summer with the handcuff situation when um, Sharon slept with Phil and Keanu on the same day. And we thought, oh, are they going to have a who's the dad? Oh, yes. So now it's like going <laughs> to be the are both Sharon and Louise going to both be pregnant at the same time. I mean, it makes it super tough as well because the baby comes out bald. It could be either of them. <laughs> Keanu or exactly. uh, Phil. You know, who could it be? The paternity test, please. Can't ask Jeremy Kyle anymore. No paternity tests on his show. That's very topical. I know. If you you live outside the UK, uh, a certain show got cancelled that was (laughs) very popular. Was it? We've got a million viewers, apparently. The thing is about Jeremy Kyle, this is completely off subject. Mm. But the thing is, since this has happened, everyone all of a sudden hates it. Yes. But no one seemed to hate it before. Although I did hate it. I used to purposely change the channel so ITV would see the ratings go down no, every from, morning. From 1.001 to <laughs> 1.00. Yeah, the second yeah. Lorraine finished, I'd turn it over really quickly. So I, <laughs> so I was sending a message to ITV that the ratings should drop. You're showing your television habits quite, <laughs> quite openly here. But um, I do find it funny that all of a sudden everyone hates Jeremy Kyle. Well, there is a group on Show, Facebook. Not at who Jeremy Kyle. We shouldn't talk about this too much, but there is a group on Facebook that's trying to save Jeremy Kyle. There's a petition as well oh. on change.org. So I any... feel it's unfair that the show is called Jeremy Cole Show because it's like automatically it's being to associated him. to him. So that's not very fair on him. No, I didn't feel. Um, sorry to anyone outside the UK. Jeremy Kyle was a bit like our version of Jerry Springer. Worldwide news. Yeah, it, well, no, it's not. But but it's been cancelled. The male because... Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. They had Trisha actually. Actually, they had Jeremy Kyle in the America. Oh yeah, they yeah, did. They did. Yeah, yeah, they did have an American version. One season. Yeah, see, we've had many seasons and it's been cancelled. So <laughs> yeah, anyway, I everyone's jumping on the bandwagon there. Um, so right, we're going to talk about Louise and everyone. So Sharon's taken her to the abortion clinic, yes. thinking she's had one. Scenes weren't done as well as Michelle back in 1986, but well, Michelle did it alone though, wasn't it? so. So it was much better. Very, yeah, it was very much um from an outsider's point of view mm. and also a counselling, which was much more sympathetic toward Michelle's view, while this one's much more over the top and. Mm. But we did get that scene with Sharon mentioning her experience. Yes. Which I did mention last week. I said I hope that is mentioned. And it was because it was the reason that she has fertility issues and things. So yeah, so she she finds it hard to become pregnant mm. she had an infection when she did it not to go deeply into the technique but um obviously the way that louise is doing it is just taking a pill and two uh, pills yeah two pills one and then one 24 hours later mm-hmm. i say just it but you know it's that yeah. the technique that's done more yeah. commonly now because yeah, sharon was like i'm not trying to put you off it's different now <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly do it louise off you go toodle pip she had a conversation with lola beforehand though and she just wanted to know what her thoughts was when she was pregnant as a teenager mm. what she what she did I didn't cover it up very well um <laughs> it was another you know kind of common trope of oh a friend of a friend I and i'm just asking for them yeah. and I was like, okay then so lola saw through it straight away and lexi was convinced to join in by just mm. having a milkshake and a donut and she mentioned that um part of the trouble was because phil was trying to get custody she mentioned that as well briefly to um mm. louise so whether that would put warning signs in louise's head about her dad being maybe he would try and take over yeah maybe i mean louise seems really excited once she just made the decision not to go forward with it she seemed quite happy with her decision she's not letting anyone know is she apart from lola she's not but she keeps looking at the same website where <laughs> it tells you that the baby is the size of an apple <laughs> And, and and you can get apps now you see but yes, where it grows live on your phone. but she didn't look at anything past this page and she just sat there looking at it like oh i've got an apple inside me and phil picked up an apple from the fruit bowl as well didn't he he started eating oh, really? it in front of her yeah Symbolism. well exactly is phil gonna eat her baby <laughs> that's what i'm questioning but yeah i mean she's keeping that a secret to herself so she's letting everyone know that she has had the abortion like sharon thinks she has keanu thinks she has and bex thinks she has she's not even told the truth to bex has she no, she's yeah. Which is well, strange. she's not they, very happy with Bex. Yeah, no, because Bex has been distracted from her studying <laughs> and her pills. 
Yes, her ADH pills, ADHD pills, I should mm. say. And she had planned a whole day around doing some studying and she couldn't take an hour out of her day to look after Princess Louise. So yeah, I th- Louise went really off on Bex as well. It's like the amount of times you've been horrible to Bex the past two yeah. years. I was on Bex's side. I was on Bex's side. And furthermore, when Bex does, find, well, out of pressure really from Keanu, reveal to, to Keanu that Louise had gone to the clinic and had an abortion, mm. um, she was then super angry at him for finding that out as well. It's like, well, he has every right really mm. to discover that she had done it. Obviously, it's Louise's decision, ultimately, yeah. but he has did a right Bex, to know. Um, not know that Louise didn't want Keanu to know about the abortion, or did she not? Because she like, did tell him and then was like, oops, I mean, what? I was like, yeah. I think Bex, did she know or not? I don't think Louise said one way or another, but at the same time, it's not something really news that you should no. give. It's news that really Bex should have told Keanu about. Um, it was up to her to give that information out. So that's what Bex yeah. was angry Keanu about. didn't take it well, though, because he went to have one pint and well. No, no. He is a lightweight, isn't he? It's all that fasting he does for that body, you see. <laughs> all that exercising. 12 that... hours, no food. <laughs> he he relates to Bex for all that running really fast and getting a really high heartbeat. <laughs> you know, he's oh, Bex running around the house in a jogging mm. suit. You know, she, he relates to that big time. Um, who knew it? that when, I don't think we've really seen Keanu drunk before, but like he's quite... Nasty, isn't he? Mm. When he's drunk, is that what his dad's like? Do you think? Well, his, his mum is. Out. We know that Karen can be nasty. And she she's... throws some punches. Well, she's she? thrown a couple of bar brawls uh, <laughs> in her time in the square since she's been drinking. But mm. yeah, really, yeah nasty. really nasty. Quite cutting toward Mick and Linda, mm. and kept making little jives at them both. Don't like that in my little Keanu. But Linda luckily saved the day and went to find Sharon. <laughs> Who can help him? I know, Sharon. I know, she's like, I'm going to go look. And so she didn't get to go to Keanu's house. She just went up and down the market. Yeah. Well, because she knows Sharon's always shopping. That's all Sharon does. She's even E20 tapping on the computer keys, pretending to be doing something. Mm. Or, um, yeah, just looking for a new dress. On she had Christmas huge um, eyelashes on this week, Sharon, as well. Like, even for Sharon. When she was in the abortion clinic telling her story, they were, like, five times bigger and thicker than they normally ah. are. Did you not notice? I hadn't, but it does. I did feel it very windy down this area. So the butterfly effect must have happened via Sharon's God, eyelashes. They were huge. No, I didn't see them. Very... I saw her eyes were very big. They really... <laughs> they... No, seriously, because I said to you, I said, I'm sure she's had work done around her eyes. <laughs> Which, um... She did. She, they looked really it's large. The eyelashes. Mm, it enlarges the eyes. Exaggerated them. Mm. She had a nice Egyptian eyeliner as well, didn't she? Just to really exaggerate those 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 mm. acting eyes. Because she acts with her eyes, Sharon, oh God, doesn't yeah. she? They That's around. why she has to have the extra big ones on for the like abortion. Bit. Mm. Mm. Very serious. <laughs> Flatters. Um, but she took the chance to have a chat with Keanu. And um, they went back to the archers. And she does tell him that she knew about the abortion. Mm. Which he's a bit angry about. But then they sort of let out their feelings for each other well they do so they you know Keanu's still upset about uh, her, him being sent off and him being beaten up and it's all Sharon's and Sharon says she sent him away because she feared she couldn't keep a secret any longer from Phil mm. and her kids Denny well she nearly did tell Phil didn't she until he walked mm. in um, mm. a few months ago but yeah Keanu stood in the doorway and was like no <laughs> no you don't you don't say anything um, and yes one thing led to another and um, well hey Shianu was back on the cards, mm. as you said earlier. Seems to be quite a turn on for Sharon the Archers, doesn't it? Like, yeah. That's where she seems to get most of her grease. <laughs> she likes to grease up in the Archers. <laughs> and uh, the second half of this storyline, like mixed over with Ben, because he kind of like nearly saw them like touching each other's arms or their hands or something, didn't he as well? Yeah. The next day, Sh- uh, not Shianu, uh, Sharon d- wanted to to say to Keanu what we did was wrong. We can't talk about it. And Keanu <laughs> agreed with her. And as you said, yeah, it's like touch of the arm. And Ben walks in and he's straight away on it. He's like, oh, hang on. Mm. There's something going on oh, between on them two. So he starts investigating. So he goes to Sharon's second haunt, which is E20, where she's looking at Doing up. some work. Well, is she... She's typing she, something she's or t- looking at money. Banks, probably. Probably treating some money into her bank. Yeah, <laughs> transferring some of Phil's bank. But Phil's got no money. So there's no money to transfer. She's got her own accounts. No, oh, she. She's moving money about. Just from Mel's For no to reason. Her, <laughs> to Billy. But yeah, Ben interrupts and he sort of hints about her and Keanu, but doesn't outright say. But like, it's enough to scare her a bit. Her heart yeah. rate jumps yeah. a bit. So she quickly jumps, she quickly almost pushes, again, Sharon has a, the expertise of pushing blame or responsibility to someone else and quickly says, oh yeah, you know, um, Phil's not very happy with Keanu, he's not the flavour of the month anymore. And Ben was like, oh, okay, that's good to know. Mm. So now Ben knows that he needs to find, that, that he knew that Keanu, or everyone knows Keanu's the weaker member of the Mitchell clan. 
as it were. And so he's not a Mitchell. Every, an honorary men- oh, yeah, Mitchell, okay, isn't yeah. he? And so he knows that Keanu's perhaps the one he needs to strike again in order mm. to get back in yeah. himself. I couldn't really work out what Ben sort of offered him. He, like, was it a, to do a job for him? It was to work on the car lot as, in, as a mechanic. But under Ben, not uh, Phil. Well, Ben was very... very oh, yeah. <laughs> Ben was very, uh, very sure to let Keanu know that he'll be working under him because the innuendo with Ben and Keanu, like it started off with Ben just licking his lips and biting his finger while staring <laughs> Keanu so bend over the oh, yeah. engines in the in the cars. Wasn't and... very happy though. Keanu said, "What do you want to take a picture?" Yeah, very dismissive. We've mm. been waiting for this since 2017. You have from that one scene that they had before in the arches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now they're back again. But um, yeah, so there's a bit of a soft spot for Keanu, but he wants to manipulate him. He does. I mean, I think Ben thinks he's going to be able to manipulate him sexually in some think? way. Well, he said you've you've already had you've had the weed. Oh yeah, you're not fussy about a Mitchell. Yeah, you're not fussy as long <laughs> as it's a Mitchell. So he's almost saying like you just want you all you care about is the name. So <laughs> bunk up with me, buddy. Yeah, that'd be good. Why not? Do you Pex reckon? Guy? Do you think? Well, there's a lot of um, theories going out there that Peck Sky is Keanu. It I mean, can't be Keanu because of the scenes that we've just had so it can't well be. no because we don't do we know that they've had a night together perhaps they've just you know talked. no pex guy text because he had that weird emoji saying last night was really hot aubergine emoji no that's what ben sent back oh the one that pex guy sent was like three splashes of water <laughs> <laughs> oh god so that can't be keanu um shivers down my spine <laughs> But yeah, there's lots of theories on who Peck's guy is. Even yeah. the guy who... Do you remember Josh who dated Lauren and she walked off for him really stupidly last time we saw Lauren? No, she walked away from him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hobbled, he, he hobbled was, away. He was on Twitter, the actor, tweeting about Peck's guy. Thinking was he? him. What? All right. Well, there was an article which said who could be Peck's guy be? And Josh was on one of the lists and the guy... Yeah. And then he was there tweeting away. Oh, well, did, did, Everyone wants in on it. Surely he'd know if he's sent the t- tweet. <laughs> text off to someone i don't know if pex guy is an actual existing character though he can't be there's not many characters who could be bisexual sounds like big left. story to me who is pex guy the sun newspaper could run a uh, vote uh, weeks ago i did say when callum highway looked at ben he did look at ben a few months ago yes and i mentioned it then i flagged it and then this week he was watching him cry well i was about to say we're going to, to that story later yeah but yeah, later, but but yeah. yeah. That, that, there's i have much to say about that actually <laughs> So keep Peck's guy pinned onto that mm. pinboard. Keanu's being a bit like conniving and he's um, pretending to be Ben and he, he gets the papers of the cars. He the gets the logbooks, yeah, of the, all the cars. Mm. Um, and Ben finds out that Keanu pretended to be him. So. He does, yes. Yeah, so um, because Keanu's acting a bit cocky and Ben's, uh, because when Ben's saying, you know, do you want a job and or not? And, you know, yeah, Keanu's really acting quite cocky about it. So Ben's questioning why the car's not appeared on the car lot. They start to drive past him. He stops them and he's like, you're not Ben. Ben's, and he's like, oh, who, what does Ben look like? Is he a good-looking guy? Yeah, yeah, pretty boy. Yeah, pretty boy. And the <laughs> guy's like, I wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not Ben. Don't you, don't you say something like that. I know, he's very offended by that. He funny. was, yeah. this sexuality questioned. <laughs> it's one of the baby boomers, you see. Never question a baby boomer. But yeah, that's kind of where it left off. So obviously we've got Ben still one up on Keanu at the moment which doesn't normally take very much to be one up on Keanu bless no. him and Billy showing a moment of responsibility to or Jay because Jay obviously is like I do want to start the car lot but I don't have the money and Ben says leave it to me mm. and Billy warns him don't trust Ben yeah, coming from Billy yeah I know God. I know so if Billy's warning Billy was you, money laundering last week <laughs> yeah for Phil I mean obviously he's probably being loyal to Phil perhaps and Jay might see that but at the same time you know if Billy's warning you against someone <laughs> you're in a lot of mm. I find it very convenient that they're building up to everyone hate bit um hating Ben. So there's obviously gonna be something that happens to Ben well, you and think... we're not gonna know who's done it. Yeah, you think it's gonna be a, a kind of like a who shot Phil mm. style story. Yeah, I hope they don't kill Ben because that would just be a complete waste. Mm. And I'll be annoyed. I don't think they'll kill him, but I think that'll but be something a... might happen to him. Yeah. Like yeah. near death. Well Coronation Street did a who pushed Kembalo down the stairs story. <laughs> They did, and it was it was a proper deal at the time, and that was around Kate Oates. So then she likes to introduce like the older mm. characters back in because having... every single character is getting a "I hate you, Ben" thing. Yeah, like Rainy, Max, mm. like everyone. So who shot Mr. Burns? Mm. Be nice to have a who shot Ben. Yeah, I mean Phil got shot in two thousand one, so it's not really an anniversary yet. So maybe it'll be something else. Well, don't you think the anniversary? What is thirty fifth anniversary? Isn't it? Oh yeah, they can do it then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's Next what I February. think. I think it's a long burner. We all thought it was going to be some kind of 
murder mystery or something like that. But yeah, I agree with you. I think it's going to be a who shot yeah. Ben story. Or something similar. And so, you know, someone who would be very upset if uh, Ben got shot or certainly would not shoot Ben. Well, we don't know. Wait, that's true. Is our cat. Our cat? She's got a storyline. Well, she hasn't got a storyline. Her neck has a storyline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. Because her necklace is back. Yeah, she thought it was costume jewellery. <laughs> That's you know when we we joked and on previous uh, podcasts that she her neck went green from wearing it all the time <laughs> but she stopped wearing it for a long time. Mel looked for it but couldn't find it. So everyone knew that that necklace was valuable <laughs> apart from Kathy. Apart from Kathy. <laughs> well, she's very ordinary, isn't she? She yeah. came from a very ordinary um, background when fruit she grew veg, up. Married a fruit and veg yeah. seller, and her Pink. parents were very poor, so she's not been in this lavish lifestyle. Mm. So she just thought it was a necklace, but Chantel corrected her. Well, yeah, and Kim, they both said that it was a very nice piece and it was more than a bit of costume jewellery, mm. surely. And uh, Kathy like, Ooh. just went, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, she's, we having, well, she's having her hair done, mm. having her face pulled back. So, yeah, she was on the internet finding out how much it's worth. And somehow she's got, like, the deeds or the details about the Albert, which was sold for £1 to Aidan yes. Patrick Maguire. <laughs> no, Aidan Patrick Joseph Maguire. Yeah. Get it right. right. Um, for one pound. So I'm guessing he's putting it up for sale. Well, is he or is he doing it through a, a kind of mm. associated firm? But there are, you know, he's made a lot of profit from that one pound. I know. 499,999 pounds mm. is how much he's making. Yeah. So yeah, quite a good little investment that, wasn't it? So that high storyline really paid off because Callum got the ring, which paid for the Vic. Oh, now yeah. Kathy's got a necklace, which is going to pay for the Albert. Yeah. So it all goes round. All goes round and round about. And we're still looking at who Peck's guy might be. And we still don't know if Luke is dead. And walking around with a gummy mouth. No, we do know he's dead. His body was found in the Thames. It was was it his body though? Yes, because the teeth were missing. And then the teeth were then found with Phil. Yeah, and then but, he threatened. Yeah, but the teeth were missing so you can't identify the body. <laughs> Phil had the teeth. It could be anyone's, te- uh, anyone's body. We so just have his he teeth. just has no teeth. That's what, yeah, he's walking around gummy. No, they're he's not going to bring, teeth, like George not gonna bring Luke back. No, boring. Pex guy? No. He didn't have Pex, did he? I don't know. He was all right. Been he was working the... out this right. year. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's buying the Albert, which I do love that she's buying the Albert, because obviously it's the old Dagma. Yes. And it's like such like a poetic justice for Kathy, because that's where like her life like went really downhill from what happened in there with Wilmot Brown. So her to then come back and open it back up again under her own name yeah. is really good. Rise from the Phoenix. Yeah. From the Flames. Phoenix from the Flames. Yeah. So... Um, she's getting 100 grand, so she needs to probably get another investor on mm. board. So we still have to wait and see what's happening. With that. But she's doing it really quietly, isn't she? She's not know, involving she's anyone. Totting around by yeah. herself. I mean, I'd love to know how much money she would have got if she kept the receipt. <laughs> if if only Ben had got a receipt for that uh, know. item of jewellery. Cara. It's her jewellery. I know. Maybe she would get in touch and ask her for a receipt. <laughs> right. So next up, we are going off to one of. One of two games this week. We've had a really hectic week this week, so we do apologise. No feature, but I uh, hope but you enjoy these. Top games. Top, top games. Right. Time for a bit of a, a fruit and veg injection, Ben. Oh, another Stick dose. that down your throat. <laughs> Martin Fowler's on the path. Okay. Although, I, because I'm dedicating the episode to Pete Bill this week. <laughs> Oh yes, I'm calling Pete it. Bill. Yes, I'm calling it Pete Bill's five a day. Oh God. Yeah, just to mix it up a bit. It's got absolutely no relation to what the question is. <laughs> I just fancy changing the name for a bit of fun. Cheap, rotten veg from Pete. Well, he's got only the best. Yeah. And if you if you disagree with him, he'll shout you down and tell you to get <laughs> off his stool. Find a better Seems that using his jumper and gives it to you. Doesn't yeah, he? at least you know it's clean for the breath of Bill. Right, so uh, anyone who hasn't listened to the show before, Peter Bill's Five a Day is a very easy game. Basically, I'm going to give Ben a question and he has to give me five answers related to that question in 30 seconds. You ready, Ben? You up to the task? Yes. OK, so this week, Denise has been starting to get very romantic with one Jack Branning, <laughs> another one of my favourites. However, Denise has been quite romantic with a few men on the square in the past. Mm. So I'm going to ask you in 30 seconds to name five men who Denise has had sexy times or been romantic with. And this includes just kissing. And this is since her first appearance on the square in 2006 to the present day. Now, 
relationships that started off screen or when she wasn't on square do not count. So I cannot accept Owen Turner, who is Libby's father, or Lucas Johnson, oh, who is good. Chelsea's father. I'm trying to remember Lucas's name, so that's good. But he doesn't count. I was thinking Luther, as in Lucas. I couldn't remember Lucas's name. Oh, you thought his name was Luther? Yeah, I was no. panicking, that's so that's a, good. That's another show. <laughs> I'll give you a few seconds just to think because I can see you beavering away. Yeah, I'm writing things down. Okay. As they pop into my head. <laughs> so you have 30 seconds to name as many love interests of Denise Fox as you can, starting from now. Okay. My Denise history is not very good. Um, Ian Bill, I know that they were together. Yes, she left him after discovering that he had slept with Rainy Cross on the night of Lucy's murder. Yep. Uh, Phil Mitchell. Yes, they had a child together. <laughs> I'll be offering a bonus point later with that one. Oh. Um, Kush. After a long holiday, they decided to split up after they should have stayed age together. Gap. They should have. Um, <laughs> who, who got crushed in a car thanks to uh, Ronnie? Fat boy. Fat boy really? had a brief relationship, but when he wanted to go public, she broke it off. Oh. Um, Max Branning. No. Jack Branning. No. <laughs> Not yet. Um, time's up. Time's oh, up. I've given know. you more than enough time. I know. You did very well, actually, considering, as you said, you don't have a very deep Denise knowledge. No. <laughs> I do like Denise, but not that much. <laughs> um, very, apparently, there's, there's, um, reading through uh, some of the things, it's uh, she's had a really good storylines actually on EastEnders. Mm. Quite fun. Kevin Wicks. Oh yeah, of course. Was her Jenny. first love interest. He died in a car accident. Yusef Khan, who yeah. was Zainab's husband. Oh, was, the evil one. Yes, they got back together, so they broke up. Fat boy, as I said. That's weird. Ray Dixon was Kim's boyfriend, but he kissed Denise and then blamed Denise for it. And uh, Denise then said that she was dead to her, but not for the first time that uh, Kim said that to Denise. <laughs> In Bill, Kush Kasimi, and Phil Mitchell. And the bonus point is, can you give me the name the of their child? <sighs> it begins with D, I think. No, it doesn't. A? No. Nope. I don't know. Del- Delton. No, it doesn't begin with... I don't know. What is it? The second you say it, I'll know it. It's really annoying. Maximus. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's quite an old name. Raymond. Oh, I would have got that. Raymond. There you go. So that's uh, what Denise has been up to with her time on the square. She's been on for a long time. It's about 13 years. I know. What's she got to show for it? A GCSE. <laughs> GCSE. In a, a salon. A salon. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Her salon mm-hmm. wasn't her first business venture with Kim. They reopened the B&B after it burnt down and they had a damaged relationship in their business together then as mm. well. So... I mean, you think that she would have learnt from her mistakes. Like, uh, Kim business. had a spin-off, didn't she, based on it? She did. That was for BBC Learning, wasn't it? It was um, BBC Three, I think. No, it was for Learning because they kept putting words underneath the screen, didn't they? Just when she would say, yeah. I watched them recently. Kim's Palace, it was called. Mm, mm. Mm, it was really bad. But I think it was, it was a written learning. by her. Yeah, the, the content was fine, but it was a bit... Cheap. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was obviously done on a budget of like one cameraman, one sound. I got man. through like two episodes and then I just... Was there two episodes? I've only there seen one. There was a whole series. There's like six episodes. Was there? Well, yeah. why do they keep having... It was an educational thing. I'm certain of it. I think that was just a joke on one of the episodes. I think it was like... Oh. Oh, I see. That's the episode I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. So that was the joke, was it? I think so. It wasn't very good, bless. <laughs> okay. Well, on that sour <laughs> note, uh, how did you guys get on? Do you let us know on our social medias, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And that was Peter Bills. Five a day! Right, so on to more of the serious storyline this week. Yeah, really sad and qu- quite sudden to me anyway, because I thought they might have panned this out a little bit longer than mm. they actually did. Um, but yeah, r- real sad story. Yeah. It was, I mean, even though we didn't particularly know Dana, Dina, Dinah. I know, I can... Dinah. I'm going to okay. go with Dinah. Cool. As long as we didn't, know, we didn't get to know her that long, like really this last week and this week is like the most we've seen her rather than just being in a chair or in a bed Mm. not really saying much i think it's a shame we didn't maybe get to know a bit more i mean you learn a lot about her bond with bailey this Mm. week i'm like you know her her love for bailey was unparalleled and she genuinely thought that her plan to commit suicide was for bailey's benefit because Mm. she thought that she was dragging bailey down bailey wasn't having a childhood bailey was relying on her care too much and she just wanted bailey to open her wings and kind of just being able to enjoy her life but mm. has this come a bit of a you know a bit of a pain for bailey is this more mm. of a mistake it's hard to even um put yourself in that frame of mind of loving her child but at the same time willing to like kill herself yeah and, and like, potentially hurting her yeah and, and maybe destroying any kind of because 
obviously Bailey's going to blame herself the whole time for this. So she's mm. going to think this is for her to be blamed for. Mm. And um, obviously Karen had that moment in the cafe where she was talking to the guy who was a sufferer of MS. He had MS, but he was saying, I've been there before. Yeah. You, there is something afterwards. There's more to look forward to. And obviously Dinah was in that frame of mind where there isn't. No, she couldn't see anywhere out of the mm. black hole. Um, But as you said, Darren said that, you know, there, there's you need to, look at the little things to realize there's more to life than just your illness and the mm. ms and that eventually you will get yourself out of it and with the right support and care you can have it and karen just want to say as well that actor he is a charity worker in real life for ms also not an actor speak, no he just like speeches and does lots of promo so. because i mean i mean he was tremendous i thought he was really excellent mm. um and uh he played is darren was his name yeah and he just played it remarkably well and really put reassurance i mean it's a shame that he wasn't given the chance to talk to Dinah because I mm. think it would have been nice to see a scene where he was comforting her and explaining to her. Mm. And okay, perhaps then after that, she might have been like, well, no, I've made my mind up. This is my decision rather than just before he's had a chance because he got to speak to Karen um, and it really gave Karen some hope that perhaps yeah, she, she was could... like, right, you'll come over. We'll talk to her and yeah. we'll get it sorted. I mean, how do you feel that Dinah had asked Karen to help her like do you think that was fair on to put all that on Karen because they actually hadn't known Karen that long really no I think it was frightening for Dinah and I think she kind of wanted that support just to help her not so much die but just to have someone sat there so she's not mm. dying alone yeah and I think that was the thing that scared Dinah the most she was going to die alone mm. um and it was really sad and ultimately really Karen saying no was a <sighs> It wasn't selfish, but it was a bit... I it's can... a big thing to ask yeah. someone, especially someone that you've only known like well, that's true. less than a month. That's true. It was a lot to ask of Karen. Yeah. I mean, it's a shame she didn't ask someone like Mitch, but I think she knew what the response would have been from Mitch. And again, I think that's why Dinah asked Karen, because she thought, well, I don't know Karen well enough to know whether she'd say yes or no to mm. this. And perhaps there would be an opportunity for someone to be sat here with me. So because it was almost like a stranger, that's why Dinah asked. Yeah, I mean, Mitch has just been... He's got such a high haul. At the end of the week, he was such a... He was like, oh, you're dead to me, Karen, for doing this. How dare you, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, he's been missing from Dana and Bailey's life for most of Bailey's mm. life. Like, Bailey's just found her mum dead and he wasn't with her. He was more concerned with talking or shouting out at Karen. Like, Well, he was I angry at Karen. She, I don't think he deserved to be angry at her. Well, he was angry at Karen because Karen hadn't said anything. But then Karen was asked by Dinah not to. Mm. So well, he hadn't been there for years. He hadn't been there for years. So it was Dinah's right to say that to Karen. Um, so I agree with you. Yes. So Mitch had no right to really no. be upset. because I it's... don't know whether if Mitch is putting, knowing that it really, he maybe should have been there and he's just pushing it on to Karen to try and. But that's why Karen said to him that it was her mm. because he did blame himself. And Karen, Karen being, again, very caring, couldn't allow him to think that. And so he said, well, actually, I'm some there's some blame on my shoulders here because she asked me and I could have maybe mm. explored this with a counsellor quicker and got in con con contact with you, about Mitch, about it too. Mm. I do really feel for Karen, like, being put in that situation because the fact that Dinah asked her, like, now Karen has to live with that, like, forever, the mm. guilt that, like, blaming herself. Like, she might think, oh, it probably was my fault that she's died. Yeah. I think it was really... It's a very selfish thing, suicide, isn't it? I think it was very selfish of Dinah I think it's to do A, a with yeah. Karen and B, to with Bailey. But it's just trying to even imagine being in that much of a dark place that those two yeah. things aren't as important as what she did. I think you have to be so careful to say that suicide is selfish mm. because I think that you don't know the the, the mind that someone's exactly, in. Exactly, yeah, that's what I and mean. And it's, it's really tough and tricky. And I mean, for Dinah, she couldn't see any light at the, at the end no. of that tunnel at all. Yeah, um, I mean, even for her daughter, mm. like knowing her daughter's going to be there, she still went through with it. It's like yeah. just imagining how of a dark place she must have been in. Yeah, really dark place. And she thought that, you know, by ultimately doing this act that Bailey would be better off. So again, that actually gave her a bit of comfort for her her suicide. Yeah, because they kept showing like Karen, like she was on the phone, wasn't she? And she was being like all confident on the phone, like saying, oh, this happens, this happens, like why Bailey wasn't somewhere. It mm. was something like that. And Dana was sort of looking at her thinking, you know what? I think Bailey's going to be OK. Like yeah. there was lots of moments like that the past few weeks where Karen kept showing that she um, was up to it. Yeah. Like, being a mum. I mean, it was lovely to see that last scene between Bailey and Dinah when she says her 
they give an extra long hug. Yeah, she says goodbye. And we knew that it was going to be goodbye, mm. um, but Bailey didn't, and nor did Karen. And I'm really surprised Karen hadn't worked that out, to be honest with you. Or Karen's quite street smart, and you think she's like, oh, if she's going, trying to get everyone out of the house. Mm. She's insisted that Mitch shouldn't visit her today. Maybe something's going on. Yeah. She was just in the frame of mind that she was going to sort it out, I guess, wasn't she? She was She was thinking, I've met this guy who's going to come talk to her. Yeah. I told the nurses. She, in her head, she was like, oh, no, I've sorted this. She's confident that that corner but, had been um, turned. Yeah, it, it wasn't. I mean, it was also, I don't know how well, because um, Keegan went to tell Bailey, but he, like, told her in the middle of the market, and I thought... And mm. what he said as well. Yeah. It's like, she's not there anymore. Mm. It's... Mm. Like, why didn't they say, oh, Chantal and Grey, why don't you take Bailey with your kids just to your house for the night? Yeah. And then maybe come talk to her in the house, like, with Mitch and Karen with her. I just thought that was a bit like, oh, Keegan. Yeah, it was that very sudden. the best um, way to break the news no. to her. I mean, she saw there was an ambulance outside the, the, the house, so perhaps, mm. you know, the, the only way they could they knew was to Bailey... Knew. Bailey's smart enough to know that something had gone wrong yeah. with Dinah. You know, and to say, like, oh... Chatham and Riley had fallen down the stairs, so we got an ambulance here. You know, it, 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 she would know. She'd be like, no, 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 you're making that up. Yeah. Something's wrong with my mum. So I suppose, in a way, it had to be said quite suddenly to Bailey. But he didn't. It was almost like if you if you're going to do that, you need to say, as you say, take Bailey to one side, maybe go to a quiet room, not in public, mm. and just explain to her slowly what what's happened yeah. with your mum. Just mom. in the middle of the market, in front of yeah. the mouse. That's a bit like. Yeah, yeah. and then I say just to say, oh, she's not there anymore. It's like what. Well, where is she mm. in ikea you know it, it seems like really the wrong thing to say but then i suppose keegan this is tricky for keegan as well because he's holding back the tears while he was telling yeah uh daily at the same time i mean shout out for the game taylor ball i have to say that's a game i'll be playing next this summer <laughs> they have lots of games don't they because at christmas they play the lava game in their kitchen yes. the carpet is lava yeah um but taylor ball is when you throw a ball at someone and shout an insult at them <laughs> So that was a fun well, game. Well, this was one. When one of the children threw the ball at Chantel, they said, Moody Mummy. Ooh. Now I'm wondering, is this an extremely subtle hint at something that's going on behind the scenes here? Because we know there must be a storyline of Chantel and Grey. Yes. Well, we don't know what the storyline is, no. so I'm just grabbing whatever I can. Well, did you notice this week that Grey um, made it his active duty to turn Chantel's opinion against Karen this week? When they were walking back to the house before Bailey found yeah. out, he kept saying, oh, typical of your mum, not to look after Bailey when she's meant to be the one looking after him. Mm. And she, even though he paid for the, the meal for them to kind of reconcile, he's almost like wanting them to get together and then pulling them away mm. again. And it's, it's, so it's strange. He's, he seems to have this kind of manipulative nature yeah, toward Karen and Chantel's relationship. I just want to know what it is. I, I just want, I think the start of it must be coming in the next few weeks. But mm. I just want to know what it is. I hate not knowing. <laughs> I just want to see Chantelle and Grey alone together in the house for like three scenes. They could do a two-hander. That'd be fun. Already? Yeah, no. why not? No. Throw them into the deep end. You need to earn a two-hander. <laughs> but it's nice that it's been done so subtly between Grey and Chantelle. I mean, Ikra and Habiba kind of got thrown into the deep end and no one seemed that interested. <laughs> so, well, to be fair, mm-hmm. so this time with Chantelle and Grey, because we know there's something bubbling under the surface there, we want we're to hoping, know more. Yeah, we're hoping there's something. Yeah, there Imagine must be. if there be. isn't. Well, there's, yeah, but there's lots of little... So it's a bit like what they were doing... Well, they're still doing, really, with Adam and Honey. Like, Adam had those little jobs vibes every mm. now and then so we knew something was developing yeah, that's two very similar storylines i'm just trying to work out how they can be i don't think they are that story similar lines. because gray is kind of turning Chantel's opinion against karen but what if he, if that was the case why did he then buy a house like near karen mm. like if he doesn't want Chantel to be with her family or to be because he he obviously kind of looks down on them but the same as Chantel kind of looks down on them but you don't but, know if that's yeah. Grey's she, manipulation for the past like few years. Mm. Chantel's always apologising for her family to Grey. Mm. Um, but you are right. It seems strange that you would then move into the house. But then maybe that's a power trip because he's bought the biggest house. Number one is seen as kind of like the... That's what Vincent yeah. has, wasn't it? It's seen as like the bigger, the best house mm. on the square. Um, there, there's only really one up from there, and that's the Vic. If you go in the Vic, then you are the you know the monarchy of the square. Mm. So maybe it's just a bit of a power trip, just so he can, he can physically be looking down at the square and looking over Karen's house, and it's his way of you mm. know but trying to be impressive. Seem like the typical power hungry businessman, because when he was like speaking to Mel, mm. he was quite happy to pop into the cafe and give her some free advice, and he was quite nice and honest. Yeah, he was, he was very sympathetic for Mel yeah. as well. So is he like this power hungry, or maybe maybe she is behind the scenes? Maybe she's the one who's like. No, because there's been those. Well, so he's kind of pussyfooting around her and maybe. saying, "Oh yeah, you're right about your mum." Hmm. Mm. Well, 
maybe. I don't know. We wouldn't. I don't know. We'll find out soon. Yes. But um, obviously, so th- there's a very strange relationship now with all the tailors because Mitch doesn't want to speak to Karen anymore. Dead to me. Yeah. Bailey's obviously going to find out through Mitch. So Bailey's probably going to have a few opinions toward Karen too. So is Karen slowly getting isolated within her own family now? I don't know. I'm just... The thing with Mitch is, I think he's the weakest when he's with the tailors. Like, when he was in the barbershop and he was, like, being mates with Mick and he was doing Ollie's hair, he was, like, really likeable and I quite liked those scenes. But then when I have him have a scene of Karen, I just... Mm. There's just nothing there for me. Well, I don't in, know why. You're in luck because I think Mitch is having a few football storylines soon with old Mickey yeah. Doy. I so... didn't say I like that. <laughs> Not a football story, though. Something's like on the horizon. Yeah, there's just something with Mitch where I just can't... I just think he has no right to be on his high horse where he is. Because mm. we know that he's not been there for Keegan. He's not been there for Bailey. He's not been there to care for Dinah. He's not been there for Karen. And now all of a sudden he's like... He bought her flowers and was going on his way there. And now... It's like that doesn't make up for all those years. No, no. And and to be angry at some someone for betraying you when you've betrayed yeah a few you know prior to this is seems a bit unfair mm. yeah sorry mitch not a fan well you never know we might have a, a comeback <laughs> a comeback for something of sorts maybe mm. hi everyone It's just Alex here with a gentle reminder that the first EastEnders Weekly Podcast Awards are coming and we need your help to sort out the wheat from the chaff. We've already had a much greater number of votes than we anticipated and we thank you for all joining in with the fun, but we still would like everyone to have a chance to vote in categories like Best Bitch, Hero of the Year, Miss Wolford and much more. So visit bit.ly slash eew awards you have until friday the 24th of may at 10 p.m to cast your vote you can also find links on our twitter at eastenders week and instagram at eastenders weekly podcast and don't forget to join us for the glitzy event on your favorite podcast app right so we've got even more new couplings this seems to be kate oates thing where she's just putting two that character that character they can be together and see what happens I feel like she's rolling the dice a little bit. <laughs> I know. Mm. Who's it going to be next? Big Man Patrick? <gasps> I'd love that. Because <laughs> um, she's kind of showing a matchup of Max and Mel and Denise and Jack. Yeah. Which I'm not here for this because it's two Browning brothers. So the Browning automatically brothers. I'm, my enthusiasm is sunk. <laughs> I mean, all Max has to do is appear on screen for less than five seconds on Friday. And I just hated him straight away. He does suck the atmosphere out oh, of any scene, doesn't he? He's just like a got vacuum. Got his feet around. Yeah. I mean, it's Jack was all right this week. I quite enjoyed Jack this week. Yeah, he's getting his nails done. Yeah. Did a few burns left, right and centre, telling yeah. people some, you know, he's some home camp. truths. Got, got very camp. <laughs> I mean, yes, the Max and Rainey story, is, as you say, Max is told constantly that he can't live without, or he can't do anything without Rainey. Yeah. Rainey's like his, his cornerstone. Even, no, that's just ridiculous. Because they're not. Well, exactly. But Max still won't take any of that advice anyway and just continues to try to find... Goes on, goes to a meal on his own. I mean, like, he could have gone with Rainy, oh, he's such but no. Nah. Yeah, he's such an... I was about to swear then. Um, He's so horrible because he was like, oh, I'm going to look out for some better restaurants than mine and just dismisses her. Oh, yeah, they got a highest uh, rating on like yeah. Google or something like that. And he was like, oh, well, I'm going to check them out and see mm. what like, ideas I'm going to steal. What goes there and comes back early because it wasn't that good. Mm. I wish they'd just end it like Rainy and Max. It's so nothing. Yeah, I mean, they could, Rainy especially, could do so much more outside yeah. of that Max relationship. It's just sucking the life out of him. I mean, it's just crying out for Rainy and Stuart. I'm sorry, but it really is. Mm. Rainy and Stuart, it's just crying out for a story. Well, there. No, they're sucking Mel into it. They're sucking Mel into it. Yeah, into oh, into the Branning st- a black hole. It's the vacuum. <laughs> the vacuumous vacuum. I mean, Amy's here getting storyline after storyline. And and again, Amy shines when she's outside of the Branning house. <laughs> so Yeah, because she stole the sanitary towels from the chemist. Mm-hmm. And Mel catches her. And they have a girly chat. Yeah. And it's a lovely scene. Mm. You know, that she talks her through and says, oh, I'm the first girl in my class. And... You know, she is very young, so it must be very frightening for mm. her for this to be happening. And she wants to go bra shopping. Yeah, they have a real bond, her and Mel, when they go shopping and they stuff. They do. And she's got a number. She's always phoning Mel. Yeah, Auntie Mel. She calls her Auntie Mel, which Jack doesn't like. He wants his boundaries to be kept. So <laughs> like, do not step over my boundaries. 
Uh, yes. you know, if my children get kidnapped, they go to their room and then I leave the house. Or I send them out. Yeah, or I send them out to get an errand. But do not cross my boundaries because they're mine. Mm. Um, I, I don't know if I told you this, but I had a dream about Jack Browning last night. Oh, God. I genuinely did. I dream, dream or a nightmare? Well, no, it, was a, it wasn't a nightmare as such. It was a, it was a nightmare because he was in it, but it was, it was, it was fine. Oh, what he was, was he doing? Well, he was picking me up, but <laughs> not just me. Like what, Physically picking you no, up in it, a car? in a car after oh, okay. a night out. Not it was in night time. No. <laughs> god no and i was it was me and uh, a couple of friends and he was picking us up after we'd gone out and we kept stopping it was like a almost like a video game we kept stopping because he kept getting a signal on his box saying which is in his car Mm -hmm. saying that he had to like do a mission for the police so one of them was he had to go into this factory and shoot all these people and it was really weird so like Jack was like stopping and starting something, and I was and I remember in the dream going, "Oh, for God's sake, Jack, could you just stop and take me home, please?" Was there a happy ending? I woke up. The cat meowed in my ear, and I woke up with a start. Oh. So uh, yeah, no happy ending. But I thought I'd share that. We'll probably get cut out. <laughs> it's not that interesting. Nothing to be said. You know, like Jack Browning dreams. Tell us if you dream of Jack Browning. Or any character. Yeah, and let us know what the dream is about. Tweet us at EastEnders Week. <laughs> We'd genuinely be 100% interested and we'll read them out. I want a dream with Janine and Pat. Okay. That's what I want. Well, if you think about Can it, I make it myself? Yeah, if you think about it, the last thing you think about before you go to bed... <laughs> I'll have a fag and spray some perfume. <laughs> yeah, push me down a hill <laughs> and it will come true. Um, so yeah, we had the coupling of... Jack and Denise as well, which came out of nowhere, because yeah. Mick is, like, for some reason looking for someone to date his friend or something. Yeah, which, which we really never sure. saw or met. No. There was a lot of... It was love I love week this week on mm. EastEnders. But Jack was quite upset that he wasn't seen as eligible for this date. Like, he's, oh, I'm an eligible man. Look how hot I am. <laughs> Look at me. Well, his muscle mass has gone up this year quite a lot. Mm. So, you know, he's doing it. It's Do- his new wife. Well, not his new wife, in real life. <laughs> His wife is like got him on this like fitness thing last year. Oh right, so that's why mm. he's so pumped. Mm. I mean that picture of him, which he was his top off, it was very impressive. Mm, Tamsin Alfred took that did she? on set. <laughs> I bet she did. In between takes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he's he's upset. He's not seen as an eligible bachelor, and Denise is kind of putting digs at him, but also giving him the eyes at the same time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Painting his nails. Yeah. I'm surprised he let her do that. Actually, it's very unJack running. He'd well, be that's like, what that's I not mean. very man- manly. That's what I mean. This is this this softer Jack, <laughs> but not soft Jack as in I've hired a car and got some leather gloves and driving around uh. the square going, <laughs> you know, a genuinely concerned for his daughter because he was, yeah, which he was took nice. Her to get her nails done yeah. and stuff. And he was open and honest. He said, I'm not used to this kind of thing. And Denise put her foot in it a little bit and said, oh, normally the mums go with it. Oh, dear. Her mum's dead. Yeah, silly thing to say. Yeah, it was a silly thing to say. Um, and I want to know as well what that reference was. I can't work it out about um her chucking water on him. I know. I don't know how long ago this was. Yeah. Or when it was. Yeah, I want to know. Yeah, because when they last went on a date as well, she said the last time we went out together. So they've obviously mm. been out well, before. Didn't, I think Jack dated one of her daughters. In the past. It must have been Chelsea. It couldn't have been Libby. Mm. Squiggle. She would have been too young. I'm sure. Or someone related to her. So maybe that's when like they're in a restaurant and she spilt water on him. Maybe it was Patrick. It's a really random like thing. Really random. Although I do like those random things. Oh, so. absolutely! Again, great bit of research, but we looked everywhere and we couldn't find it. Yeah. I have to ask the archive guy that we always talk about. But I can't remember his name. <laughs> no, I never Mark. Seen is it Mark? I'm not sure. I can find There's his name. Three names. Three bout names. Are you going to actually look? Yeah, go on. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. La 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 la. I found it. Oh. He's a good-looking chap as well. <laughs> Mark James Lowe. Yes, that's him. Let's actually I'm give him a proper shout-out. Hello, Mark James Lowe. Well, he's been doing such a good job. Excellent job. We've had Dan and An- Angie mentions. We've mm. had Jack being thrown with water mentions. Happy Sharon birthdays abortions. to Pete and Pauline. Yeah. Mm, all over the place. So, yeah. Good archivist. Mm, I like it. But I want to know what this is, so I'm going to have to ask him. So, yeah, we also had then Mel deciding to have a glass of wine with Max. Max still not being likeable. Yeah. This seems to be a thing that no one can do. Well, he's trying to give sympathy toward Mel because of Hunter being in prison. First of all, he kind of wrote him off saying, oh, he's a bit of a scally lag, so he deserves to be in prison. Mm. Jack I th- must confess, I kind of stopped listening during <laughs> that thing. So I don't 100% know what they were talking well, about. Mel, but I just but know he, I don't like it. Well, Mel, Mel gave as good as he got. she got, really, and just said, well, let's be honest here, Max. You've been to prison and you've done a, quite a few bad things in your past so maybe you should just lay off and yeah. stand back for a second you murdered abby yeah you practically pushed her off that <laughs> roof and and so yeah 
you know, don't be so judgmental, you mm. judgy judge. So there. Mm. And like Denise and Jack walked in on them and... No, Rainy. Was it Rainy? No, Rainy walked in, walked yeah, in on so them and scowled. Well, she, she's angry and upset because... Mm. He, you... oh, because he didn't go to his restaurant that he made a big deal about. He ended no, up he just... did go, but he came oh. back early because it was rubbish. Right. Um, and yeah, but you can it... tell how much I <laughs> invest in Max Branagh. But Rainy accused him of like coming back early deliberately because mm. he knew that Mel was babysitting. Uh, Let's just bring this. Put it past him. I wouldn't put it past him either. Let's just talk about how Amy was a bit deceitful because she started telling Mel that Jack really misses her. <laughs> so then gets Jack set up on a date with Denise, then gets him looking good for the date with Denise. Phones Mel on Jack's phone to then babysit her, but not telling her that she needs to come over for babysitting, thinking mm-hmm. that it's to see Jack. And then when she gets there, she's like, oh, yeah, daddy's going on a date with Denise. And Mel's like, Denise? <laughs> so, you know, Amy's doing a bit of a no, she had a few days with Sean Slater, didn't she? So yeah, That's right. She's learned from the best. Yeah, and the Roxy's coming out in her now. Yeah. So, yeah, because she was helping him pick what aftershave as well, mm-hmm, wasn't she? Mm-hmm. And shirt, everything. <laughs> It was really nice though. Ingrid see... taught her. Ingrid taught her that. You see. Yeah. See, she's picking up all these skills from all these women <laughs> in her life. All these strong women yeah. that just kind of come in and out of her life, and Jack's reciprocating. Through Jack. Them. I mean, give Jack his. Like I said, the character of Jack was really quite friendly and nice this week, and I, I actually liked the softened version of Jack. When Jack's not strutting around, pushing his weight around, yeah, then he's, he's fine. Right. I don't mind it. Yeah. But what do you think Mel was looking for? That paperwork that she was almost caught doing, uh, searching for. Um, some sort of money. I don't know. Do you think it's properties that Jack is um, renting? Wants, yeah, Maybe. investing, and she's trying to find how much money because she found out that how much Ian earned, mm. and that's why she started you know trying to be temptuous toward him yeah. do you reckon she's doing the same for jack yeah, i don't really think what else it could be it was was it definitely to do with jack and not to do with max Wait, Although he's not really got much money she was just looking through paperwork through filing cabinet and I she she know. claimed she was looking for a remote control which was a brilliant <laughs> excuse of the day. A yeah i know yeah i don't know probably it must be property because jack owns everything mm. so yeah who knows who knows find out next week i'm sure we will she looks on a laptop next week <gasps> not a laptop <laughs> I hope it's not password protected. Although everyone knows each other's password. It's so funny how everyone guesses their password. What would Jack's password Jack. be? It probably would be. Branning one. Ronnie. Or, maybe Ronnie. Ronnie R.I.P. Right. Speaking of how, you know, how Jack's a nice guy. We've got even a, an even nicer guy because Callum Highway had a little storyline this week. Very cold head, though. He's <laughs> is very chilly up know. there. He wore it during the summer, but not in the cold. <laughs> yeah, in the winter. He wore it to a wedding. Hmm. I had issues with that. I do love that they phased, they have slowly phased this out. I will be, um, there was a few comments on Twitter when we mentioned it, uh, and I'll do it at the end of the show when we do Who Won the Week. But um, yeah, they, they've slowly phased out Halfway's hat. Mm, that's what we wanted. And they phased out Halfway I didn't into want Callum. it. You wanted it. No, I did want it because he looks so much better without a hat on. But then when they phased out into Callum, you now insist on calling him Halfway all the time. I can't, yeah, I know. I can't not call him Halfway, but I will. I'm trying. Um, but yeah, we had these stories because obviously last year when he returned full time as a character, he returned because he was injured because he was in the army and there was that big secret because he had that wound on him, which was like a big, <gasps> what happened? Like, wasn't it like a bit of shrapnel in the kitchen or something, he said? Yeah, he he saved um, a mother and a child. Oh, yeah, that was it. But it was like, wasn't it like half a lie? And he kind of blamed himself for something for not saving someone it was like no i don't think it was a lie i think he just blamed himself for not for not saving like not being heroic it was something like heroic, that wasn't more it? Heroic, he blamed himself yeah. for something yeah and there was a oh short... no because someone else did another army guy did something and he died i think it was something like that wasn't it or he lost a leg and callum felt guilty oh yeah because he hadn't helped him yeah it was or he wasn't something there. like that he's very secretive callum i yeah realize. he doesn't lay his he doesn't you know bear his heart he he kind of doesn't say Keeps the him truth. to himself. He keeps him to himself. Because the fact that he was a virgin, he kept to himself. Yeah. Like, for ages until it happened. <laughs> but if it, yeah, that's true. With, with, with Whitney, Whitney and we got still out don't know him. whether he really liked it or not, really. I, I think he did, didn't he? He was having a whale of a time afterwards. Yeah. He's very good at keeping secrets. Because he had a doctor's appointment to see if he was well enough to go back into the army. Mm. And the doctor, like, gave him a clean bill of health. And then he said, oh, um, I get tinge, like, pains in my leg yeah and it sometimes goes numb and i can't really mm. feel anything but when he said that did you think he was making it up because he doesn't want to go back to the army so he made up his pains in his leg well i did i did i thought at he was first. making it up mm. at, well throughout and also uh, the doctor said it was neuropathic which means it's a state of mind you know it's it's something he's imagining it's mm. probably it's not actually a physical problem it's just something he thinks is there yeah and 
with that association, you just think then, well, then it's something that could be perhaps counselled out of him mm. or discussed because there was flashes um, when he when we first discovered about the the incident when he was on his tour. Mm. Um, he has flashbacks of it and PTSD. So, but that's never really been explored. So, mm. everything this being neuropathic would surely the doctor would have said, okay, fine, then we'll put you forward for some counselling. Mm. But it was pretty much just written off as, oh, okay, then well, you can't carry on with yeah. the army. So I didn't know if he was making it up because then later in the week they show him like he's like upset on the swings and he's like hitting his leg. Yeah, with the bottle. Is that is that trying to feel something or was he trying to cause pain? I don't know. Well, what no, he that's doing. it. He's obviously numb there, so him hitting himself in that spot, he can't mm. feel anything. So he wasn't, I guess, not making it up. But so he's been just keeping that secret to himself this whole year, then not mentioning it. Mm. To so I Whitney. think you were meant to think that at the beginning is that he he was nervous because he ha- he, he didn't, didn't want to want go, to go back. back to the army. Yeah, he, he was making this up, but actually he wasn't nervous about going back to the he army. He just keep everything he likes, secret. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He doesn't want people to know weaknesses, I guess. I suppose that comes from being grown up with Stuart because he had that interaction with Stuart this week as well. And Stuart was trying to be kind to him. And Callum just kind of said, oh, leave it off. Just don't bother. And walked off. Mm. And so I, I think Stuart always, or his family always gives him, that you always have to show a brave front. So that he's got this injury, shows a, a weakness in Callum. Mm. And it's not something he likes. And he feels like he's going to now be a uh, useless in the yeah. family and useless in society. Because there's nothing more he can do other than work in the Vic. Well, yeah, he doesn't want to be there forever, though. No. He said he wants to do something that helps people. Mm, what could that be? I can't speculate. No. Because <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, that's interesting. So, they're obviously going to put him in a new direction, a mm. new job. Um, we also, when he was in the um, playground, Ben was, like, staring at him. He was. And what was Ben's plan? But he, he looked quite sympathetic toward Callum. Do you think? He? Yeah, oh, I, I did. scheming. No, I thought he looked sympathetic. He saw him and saw this weak side of Callum. I mean, no doubt. Peck's guy. Could be. Is Callum Peck's guy? I don't know. If think so i like i love him but i, I don't love him I, I like him but why I, don't you love him well because he's not pex guy <laughs> he's not got pex let's be honest he might well get him to take his shirt off then and find out <laughs> no. Go on, give him a tweet but um no i think ben might use this to manipulate him but actually mm. i thought he looked sympathetic toward him i think he looked i think he looked genuinely upset for him that he obviously looked hurt and was smacking his maybe ben ball. will help him come out of his shell. So do you think that Ben thinks that he, he thinks he's gay? I don't know. And that's why I he was no doing idea. it. He was on the swings and was in grief because he was Maybe. questioning his sexuality. I don't know why he was hitting himself with the bottle. I was wondering whether he was trying to give himself an injury, but the bottle wasn't broken. Um, I just it, don't know. I mean, if he was you... just trying to get a feeling there, was he? Yeah, it's exactly that. Mm. If you hit yourself with the bottom of a bottle, it's going to hurt. It's a blunt instrument, isn't it? So it's going to hurt you. Well, maybe Callum, because he keeps everything bottled up. Like he no was... pun intended. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, maybe he was doing it like, not self harm, but like that. Maybe he was trying to like get his anger out that way because he bottles everything up all the time. Maybe he was just frustrated. Maybe. Mm. Maybe he was whacking it because it was a lie, and he was just really angry that he had to make a lie in order to mm. get himself out of the. I mean, we don't know. As you say, he keeps so much bottled up that he can't. You just don't know of Callum. You just don't know what he's thinking. That's, the thing. That's why he's quite a good character because he's mm. quite. You don't know much about his family or his history or anything really. So he's quite an open book for when there's new producer in. They can sort of take him in. He's open for interpretation. Yeah, they can go in any direction they really want him yeah. to. We know that he's kind of a nice guy, but that's about it. Mm. So yeah, I mean, I, I think Ben is obviously looking at him, thinking, "Oh, that's someone who's easily to manipulate. I'm going to keep an eye on him." Depending what he does, because he's obviously looking for a new job. Is Ben gonna draw him into one of his dodgy businesses and just get him and just to use him? Well, we am I might spoil it by saying this, but we know that Callum will be working with Jay. Mm-hmm. So there's that a link a there, isn't for next there? Week. Okay, I'm really sorry if I've spoiled anything. We've for got anyone. a spoiler cast for next week. If you want to listen to it now. Oh yeah, well you can watch it. It's on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube only. It's exclusive to YouTube, just so we don't uh, leak to people who might not want to hear it leaked. <laughs> yeah, check it out on our YouTube channel. Just search EastEnders Weekly. Mm-hmm. Spoiler be... cast. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we know he's got a new job, and it's to do with Jay. Anything to do with Jay, obviously to do with Ben in the end. So exactly. I'm guessing he's just going to manipulate and take advantage mm-hmm. of his fragile state. Because yes, that's exactly it. He's got. He's Which in a fragile could lead state. to Stuart knowing that Ben's abused Callum into a who done it. He could be another one. Stuart. Oh, there we shot go. Ben. Who shot Ben? Stuart. Because we know that Ben is turning the cogs for Jay. So. 
Mm. It's all links in together, doesn't it? All roads lead to Ben on EastEnders. This is what I mean. The, you know, they're really putting a lot of eggs yeah. in a basket for Ben here. So there must be a reason behind it. So we know Callum's hat has gone missing. Mm, very cold. Cold Callum. Yeah, but but where could it be? Well, you're about to find out because we have a game of Where's Halfway's Hat. You know how there's been new um, promo photos released recently of Callum and Jay? I'm somewhat aware of this, yeah. (laughs) There seems to be someone missing from the promo photos of Callum Highway. No longer Halfway. I know, I saw. Yeah, his name changed and also his head looks a bit colder. Hmm. I think he's um his hat's gone missing again. <laughs> he's gone on vacation again. <laughs> he's been sending me some messages again, halfway to hats, because he's got himself a bit lost in Wolford. You've got very close friends, you and uh, the hat, haven't you? We've got a lot in common. <laughs> like what? Woolly attitude. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. And things I can't say on the show. Oh, we'll say too when, private. When the microphones are off, will mm. you tell me? But we're very good friends. Oh, good. I'm glad. You need a friend. Oh, yeah. Especially a hat. <laughs> Everyone needs a hat for a friend. <laughs> Um, so he's a bit upset, a bit worried, and he's just wondering if maybe you mm. could help because you did help last time I for once. I did. I got it. I got it straight away as well. Mm. I think I, uh, I super impressed quite a few listeners actually. <laughs> I know it went radio silent, didn't it? It really did. It really but, did. But um, so yeah, so I'm gonna play a few messages that he sent me. He's asking for a bit of help, I think. Hello, I'm Halfway's Hat, and I'm really scared. No. I seem to have gotten myself missing misplaced again misplaced will you try and find me well of course i will halfway i don't know why i respond to him as if he can hear me because he can't can't, these are all recorded messages i mean does he leave them as a a file on your email or does he just just pop up in like a cloud what voicemail Mm. like 901 Mm. wow it's really odd (laughs) you think he'd just send you a text message i know or a location i suppose he can't really use he's got no thumbs has he no that's true yeah (laughs) <laughs> it's pretty tricky. It's a tricky one for a hat. <laughs> I mean, he sent three clues for you. Yes. Do you think maybe he's doing this on purpose because he's just a bit lonely? Maybe. Well, he, he does know where he is. He, he's a one. Fr- his only friend before Callum has now disowned him, <laughs> and his only other friend he likes to play little tricks on, which is you. Hmm. So maybe he, this is just how. I it's... think he does know where he is, and he's just lonely. Probably. You've got three to choose from: what you can see, right? What you can hear, Ooh. and what he can feel. Feel. That's a new one. Touch. It's not new. It's a different word. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, I'm going to stick to the list order that you said, so I'm going to say C first, please. Okay, right. Let's see what he can see. I can see lots of sweets. Oh, oh. <laughs> lots of sweets. I mean, that would immediately take me to the Minute Mart. Oh, Because it? they have that pick and mix, don't they? Which Honey does not like people touching. You're not getting confused with the shop in Coronation Street, are you? No, the Minute Mart has a pick and mix. Okay. Um, it, it's been referenced recently. I'm sure it has. But there was a scene when Honey told a mother off because the kid was touching all the sweets. Mm, and Honey was like, yeah, no, she was going, get out, get out the shop. You can't touch them. If you're not going to buy them. So I'm going to say Minute Mart. I reckon Halfway's hat is hidden in the back room where Kim and Phil was over Christmas of the Minute Mart. <laughs> not the staff room. Mm. Okay, so what next then? What uh, you can hear? Here, yes, here, please. I can hear a oh. bell ringing. Oh. Is that it? A bell ringing. Mm. A bell. A bell ringing. Hmm. I mean, could it be the church? But that's not really a very well-known <laughs> sweet set. Shop. Sweet. Well, there is no sweet shop. There's oh. just. I mean, there's the outside play. There's the uh, garden. Not the gardens. The uh, park. There's the park. That's got like a sweet shop area. It's got ice creams. Mm. They sell coffee. Do they have bells? I mean, if you're outside, <laughs> you're going to hear bells if you're outside. Oh, although there's a bell in the Queen Vic as well, isn't there, for last orders? Oh, goodness me. I'm bamboozled by Halfway's hat. <laughs> you got one more clue, if you wanted to guess. Or... Oh, no, I don't want to guess. I want to know what, what he can feel. <laughs> I can feel a plastic bag. A plastic bag. Mm. I mean, again, that would it, that would be a shop. Bell's the one that's thrown me. Where's there a bell? Oh, I didn't know. This is really annoys me because I can already see the tweets coming in saying, "Oh, <laughs> don't think about I do. outside the resistance." What I think about with the people who hurt me, Ben, <laughs> like halfway's hat, like halfway's hat. That's right. how he feels. So there's a bell. So can, he can see sweets and he can feel plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, feel plastic bag. I mean. My gut instinct got it last time, but it's the bell. I don't know where a bell would be included. <laughs> oh, hang on. 
Oh. Oh no, it could. It wouldn't be fox and hare, would it? Because there's no sweets in there. Don't know, do they have any at reception? Well, they're like lollipops in a jar, Maybe. like they have in some. Don't know what he's looking at. And a plastic bag. A plastic bag could be like one of those caps they used to like bleach hair with. Because <laughs> I still live in the nineties. Yes. Um. Do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take a punt. I'm gonna say the fox and hare. Ooh. No, the hare and the hare and fox. Fox and hare. The fox and hare. I'm saying the fox and hare. Let's see what he says, shall we? Oh, dearie, dearie me. <laughs> it looks like I'm really not going to be found. I hope someone can work out where I am. Oh, no. But was I close? I don't know. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, I don't know where he is. If I was, I'd go, I'd go help him. But you do know, because you're the one who plays the recordings. <laughs> I think what bamboos so me he is he sends makes... them live to me. The yes or no. Oh, there are they're live. The yes or no bit is live. Oh right. Oh, I see. <laughs> so if he's in the phone, why didn't he just use his GPS? He can only send three clues. Look, halfway's hat. If you can hear me, drop a pin. Drop a pin on a map. No, he can't. Oh, is he hung up? Is he's it telepathic? Is it... How is this? What? <laughs> so it uploads to the cloud. Oh my god, my brain. <laughs> oh right. So well, do... either way, don't go around the fact that you haven't saved him. No, I know. And I... He's really in distress this time, I think. But he's because Callum's not there to save him. Mm. However, our listeners are there to save him. Hopefully. So, um, if you think you know where Halfway's hat is, <laughs> can you repeat the clues? I can. He can see sweets. Yes. He can hear a bell ringing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's really. Confusing. And he can see plastic bags. <laughs> Not the best clues he could have given, probably. No. But that's he's, kind of the point. I think he's a bit straight. You could tell in his voice it was trembling. Mm. Um, if anyone knows where Halfway's hat could possibly be mm. from those three clues. So if he's not found, we know the rules. If he's not found, there's never another there's where's no Halfway's, halfway's hat. hat. He's he dead to us. Found. He so is dead to us. Until he gets found, <laughs> there's no more of this. Um, tweet us at EastEnders Week or find us on Instagram at EastEnders Weekly Podcast. You can join our Facebook group by searching EastEnders Weekly Podcast. We can email us if you've got an idea by EastEndersWeekly at gmail.com. Do send us your guesses because otherwise, that's it. Yeah. That's the end of the hat. <laughs> well, there you go. Where's Halfway's hat was not found. If you haven't had enough of new romances this week, we've got another one. Yeah, they're blossoming everywhere. Cash. Yes, Cat and Kush. Cat and Kush kissing, kissing. Kissing. So difficult to say Cat and Kush like over and over again, so Cash. apologies. Um, so yeah, they're getting it together. They're giving me vibes of Shianu last year when they were sneaking around the Vic toilets. Mm, but they've not been quite as sneaky <laughs> no. as Sharon and Keanu. But um, it did, did re- it gave me flashbacks of it in the Vic toilet in- entryway. Did you? Yeah. Flashbacks in the toilet? <laughs> of Shianu. And... Oh, right. Of Sharon and Keanu. I thought you were just talking personally. No, no, no. No, okay. I'm a dot cotton. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, how are you finding them as a couple? Are you, are you enjoying them? Not yeah. enjoying them? I mean, it's it's they're What's a couple. What's not to enjoy? Yeah, they're all right. They're quite hot, aren't they? they yeah, having fun. I mean, whenever Kush gets together with someone, they seem, they tend to have quite a hot relationship. When Denise and Kush first got together, mm. it seemed to be quite a sexual, hot relationship. Yeah, and then it burns out. It kind of burns out. I mean, with Kat, though, she likes... A, she has quite a high sex drive, doesn't she? And she likes to, you know, mess around quite a lot. <laughs> I think she likes... I, she liked the idea of the people not knowing because I think she was a bit embarrassed with yeah. people knowing yeah, about Yeah, because Kush was quite Kush. happy for it to be public. He was like, well, go public then, might as well. Yeah, he wanted it to go public and Kat was like, well, no, can we just play it by ear? Mm. Um, but again, Kush was very good. Kush is so accommodating with women. Like Women always have these demands from <laughs> Kush. They do. I'm not um, saying women in general, but I'm just saying whenever Kush dates women... He, there's always a catch. There's always a catch. And yeah, and Kush always seems to be really accommodating with it. Yeah, he's chilled out. Yeah, isn't he? He does say something really sweet, which was that, um, you know, I haven't been on my market stall all week and uh, I don't even care. It's like the market stall was like oh, everything yeah. to him. And he's like, I'll lose money for you. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. <laughs> I'll go bankrupt for you, cat. Cat don't care. She got 50k in cash upstairs. She has. What's ever going to happen with that money? She spent some of it on Jean's private treatment mm. or private meeting. But then, yeah, that's it. It's... Maybe she'll buy some of the Albert with Cafe. Oh yeah, maybe. Oh, that'd be good. Cat and cafe. They'd have like a they'd have a leopard print room, <laughs> wouldn't they, for for cat's little assets? Mm. Yeah, that'd be good. But yeah, she went on a date because Stacey's trying to arrange dates for her. Mm. So this new guy, Mark with a C. Yeah, I don't know why they appeared. emphasise that so much. Why did you need to? Because they're building up to the line of cat saying, "I'm cat with a K." Oh. 
Okay. It's just a bit of character background for him. You know he's a he's a cheeky chappy who spells his name with a C. Yeah, but he's not that cheeky. No, he's very Kat, dull. Yeah, Cat just literally came to the table, made a bit of a innuendo pass, and he was stunned. <laughs> um, it's a shame that Stacey didn't maybe hook him up with Shrimpy. <laughs> Shrimpy and Cat went on a date. I don't think Shrimpy could handle Cat. No. No. Too much. I mean, we've discussed before of Shrimpy's... Well, I don't know. Shrimpy has like three women on the well, go normally. Is... I was getting to. Shrimpy has got three women. And we know she like he likes to go to Maggie's sex store or <laughs> sex market store. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe Kush should go over there and see if there's anything that he could use for a bit of... Oh, I thought you meant Kush with Shrimpy then. Sorry. No, I did mean Shrimpy to begin with. No, we know I mean, Shrimpy's... I thought you meant maybe Kush should go with Shrimpy. Kush could go with Shrimpy. Getting... All sorts of fan fiction writing here. <laughs> not do that. This is the world we live in now, Ben. Mm. Um, but yeah, they decide to keep their relationship on the quiet because that kind of turns Cat on a little bit by the scene, looks of it. She quite likes the idea of I this. I don't know if it's so much that or it's that she thinks that the people would be quite judgy toward Even her. Why? Well, because she's not known for being very you know nun like even <laughs> even stacy said oh you'll, you'll never be a nun this week mm. so and i think that cat doesn't really want especially now she's got all of her children plus looking after cherry around her and mm. she said that last week didn't she she knows you i've got these i've got my children to think after and the the last thing she needs is oh hello this is your new daddy oh they know him anyway because he's arthur's dad so we, well, exactly. So, which is, is even very more confusion. Yeah. I mean, Martin looked when Martin and Stacey did discover eventually that they uh, were sleeping together because they came back early from their anniversary date. Because mm. Habiba Stacey... had a line. So that's fun. Oh, what was that? Uh, what do you want to order? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. They are background waitress <laughs> characters, and. And yeah, and they came back early and Kat was hiding behind the bar. And she's like, oh, I'm just getting myself a drink. And Mark's... and Martin was like, oh, I recognise that shirt. It's like, oh, mm. do, you, do you like Kush's style, do you, Martin? Do you <laughs> yeah, recognise that? it from yeah. his stool. And um, Martin seemed quite upset to see them two together to begin with. And then kind of see, saw the jolly side of it afterwards. But... Now, the important thing about this scene mm. was when Kush popped up. Did you notice his cheeky little peck little dance he did? No. I didn't. No? No. I was probably too busy writing notes that you weren't writing about Max. <laughs> Oh yeah, it was around that. It was like um, when Stacy said, "I thought you were off men," and Cat said, well, "Not all men." And then he did like a little dance of his pecs. Is he, is he Pex Man? <laughs> Goodness sake! This is the biggest mystery in East End at the moment. Who the heck is Pex Man? It's basically H from Line of Duty, Pex Man. Oh, is it? Mm. Okay, fair enough. Do you reckon? Oh, do you reckon those twi- <laughs> that Twitch was Morse code? <laughs> I mean, it was maybe, spelling a name. There's three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's three Pex Men. We just do a little dance to show off to Cat. To show her, oh. I'm the man. <laughs> I can't believe you missed that. That's the thing you take away from that scene. I, I, I'll go back and watch it because someone needs to make a gif of it or a gif. Well, you've actually, I've actually given myself an idea, okay, so uh, you might see it at some point. Maybe that'll week. be in your dreams next week. What Be- Be- Pex Man? <laughs> Be- Man. It's so difficult. Bex Man. <laughs> Bex Man. Yeah, uh, Bex Man. I don't know. It's just really confusing. Mm. It's, it's too much. I mean, with but, um, seeing that would probably blow my mind. Mm. So don't really want. But um, secret is out, at least to Stacy and Martin. And Stacy didn't look too happy because obviously there's history with. Oh, I them. thought Stacy was also smiling. She was she laughing. Was she was surprised to begin obviously, with. Obviously, something has gone wrong with you here because you can't remember all that. Well, no, I remember Martin being upset. The dancing. It's not like a dance, <laughs> is it? I just remember Martin being upset to begin with. He went, he's frowning, and then he yeah, was she like, looked oh, shocked. Oh. I think you'd be shocked if you saw two <laughs> half-naked people behind Pat's bar. <laughs> Pat would have liked it. Pat would have loved it. She would have done a. Cheers for her G&T to yeah, that. Yeah, she would have gone to the Optic and got herself a double. Oh, me and Frank did that once. <laughs> yeah, spinning bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, the secret's out. Like they keep Secrets keep coming out quick at the moment on this show. They're not holding on to them for months. No, no. I, but, they're all over the place. But there are a few, as we said before, there's a few simmering things in the background. Pex guy. Who's <laughs> Pex guy? There's Ben, the mystery of but what's going to happen with Ben. Just getting in, into, you know, getting so many fingers and so many pies. There's uh, Grey and Chantel. That's a bit of background now. There's mm. Ikra and Habiba and Habiba <laughs> and Adam. Yeah, exactly. There's so many, there are a few background stories, but Ted. <laughs> God only knows what's going on with Ted. Um, you know, it's just that I think this week, as I said, it was Love Week. They were just trying to get so many couples Coupling together everyone up for the uh, future storylines. A lot of people say that Kate Oates isn't that great when it comes to coupling. That's not her strongest point. Mm. 
she's better at like very powerful or shocking mm. storylines. But when it comes to coupling people up, she doesn't work quite so well. So of all the couples, we'll see what you guys think uh, um, on who won the week in a bit. But before we do, mm. I just want to say that Mo is also back on the dating scene mm. because she is looking for a gardener because gardeners like a nice neat bush. <laughs> That's actually what she said. Good. It's nice to know she's neat and trim. <laughs> you can vote for her as Miss Wolford on our awards. You can. If you like a ni- nice trim bush. Yeah, if you haven't voted already, do check our awards. Mm. Bit.ly slash EEW awards. Because um, she mentioned she was also looking for a date for her and Jean. So is this going to be Aid Edmondson? Yeah, is I think be on it the... is. More is it love, be... isn't it? It's going to be a love battle between Jean and Big Mo. Maybe. Although they were talking about Adrian Edmondson and the actress who plays Jean. Yes. She was on Lorraine. She was on Lorraine. The, the show you like to watch before Jeremy Kyle. Before I turn off. Yeah. And um, she said that it was nice It was nice working yeah, it with It was a. nice was working. It was nice working. Him. So mm. I'm presuming he's only going to be a short-term yeah. character. Which is not surprising, really, no. I don't think. But at the same but time... But it automatically makes me not want to care about the character. Yeah, yeah, it does a bit. Like, what happened to that guy from Brookside who everyone was, like, going mental about joining EastEnders? Has he finished? That Danny he's guy? He's the guy, Danny, yeah. He's the one who so came in. Is that in. it, then? Like... Well, I don't know. I suppose his story with Ben and Phil was ended. It was a the yeah. battle between the Mitchells, That's wasn't boring. it? Between Ben and Phil. <laughs> That's why I can never invest in these Phil enemy people, because they just disappear. They come and they go. So there. Aiden stayed for a little while. Yeah, well, okay. Fair I've stayed as well. Anyway, I, just, I, I mentioned it a couple of minutes ago. Should we jump into it? Should we see who won the week? Yes. You know me, I ain't one to gossip. So it's that time of the show where we find out who you voted for on our Twitter, Facebook group and Instagram page of Who Won the Week. But before we do any of that, we see who's won previous years uh, this week in the past with mm. Ben as we travel into his That's gaping right. time hole. <laughs> My branding black hole. Um, and I've actually done it this week. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. Congratulations. I've watched more EastEnders. So we're going to start off with birthdays and deaths because there's only one birthday, so I had to do a few deaths. So the one person who had a birthday this week in the past was Sam Mitchell. Mm. No one celebrated it. I mean, there wasn't enough Mitchell screen time. I don't think Louise would care much for mm. her. Was it be her a auntie. great? Would be be her aunt or a great aunt? Her aunt, because Phil's sister. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'm being an idiot. Um. So yeah, her birthday was 13th of May, 1975. Doesn't look a day old. No. She's changed face, isn't she? Twice. Well, three times. <laughs> three if times. You include, back to the yeah, old face. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we had two deaths. One I've slotted in just because I wanted to talk about it because it is one day out, but it's fine. Um, so the first one, 17th of May 2016, was the final episode of Peggy Mitchell. Oh, yes. And we, well, we had planned to do something for that this week. But as I said, we we just didn't have time to do a feature. So mm. we will we will do Peggy's something. Peggy's on our mind. Peggy's always on our minds. <laughs> and the other one who died was 20th of May, 1996. Our beloved. He loved this place. Arthur Fowler. Yes. Oh. It's so sad, that end. His last episode. I don't know if you've watched it recently. I've watched it like four times. <laughs> no, I, th- I have. I think I've watched it with you. It's really you. upsetting and horrible yeah. and tragic yeah. and not fair. Martin, not even mentioned. I know. He didn't raise a glass to Arthur, did he? Yeah. He forgot the anniversary. He'll sit on his bench. Yeah. He also forgot his dad's death. Mm. Not very good. <laughs> Although I have done it slightly out of date, so it might, he might mention it next week. Oh, okay. Fine. Right, so this time last year, we had 14th of May, 2001. We've got another road trip. <laughs> oh, God. It's funny how I always find these episodes which are filmed in random places. Yeah. And before anyone asks, I don't know where they went. They went somewhere. Okay? <laughs> if, if anyone knows, let us know. Wherever Robbie's dad lives. Because Robbie is on a trip to f- meet his dad. Oh, right. His real dad. Carol's not happy. Oh, dear. But Sonia's like, Carol, it's been 20 years, people change. <laughs> um, so who is on the trip, I hear you are. Sonia's always the voice of reason, isn't she? <laughs> Even at a young age. So Robbie's on the trip with Sonia. Of, of course. course. Zoe. Zoe Slater. Oh, yeah. Jamie Mitchell's there for Sonia support. But there's also something going on between Zoe and Jamie. Oh, dear. Mm. Okay. They keep looking at each other. <gasps> Lynn is there. Oh, of course she is. With Gary. Of course He's he is. He's driving. Uh, is he? And Kat's there too for support. Kat's there? Yeah. I suppose Lynn's there, isn't she? Yeah. Mm. And um, Lynn drives past the wedding dress shop and she says, oh, can we have a look, Gary? They're not even engaged. He goes, it's bad luck. We're not even engaged. So she's obviously pressuring, pressuring him to um, 
propose. Is it bad luck to look at a wedding dress if you're not proposed? To <laughs> well, some... Gary doesn't want any of it. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't want to get involved. Well, the reason is because this place where they're going, uh, Manchester. There you go. <laughs> is that true? No, I don't you, know. Your eyes were darting around um, Sharon style then. <laughs> Gary has arranged to meet up with one of his old exes in a shop. She owns a shop, like a weird shop. It sells like ran- random things. Like and they know this? Thing. No, they don't know this. He's done it secretly in the Yellow Pages. Got the yellow pages. Yeah. Oh my god, that's showing age, mm. isn't it? And they have a little chat, and um, she left him in like 1974 or something. Oh, he would have um, been a baby in 74. It was something like that. No, he's quite old, isn't he? Not that old. Sam Mitchell was born in 75. Yeah, he's well, older than Sam Mitchell, isn't he? No, he's the same age, I'd say. Okay, well, it was like 1984 then. Okay. <laughs> I skimmed past it because I hate Gary. Okay, fine. So this is took a lot of time for me. Okay, cool. Um, and then she left him on Valentine's Day. Oh dear. So um yeah, he he sort of ended that bridge, got over it all, and then he decides to propose to Lynn on the seafront. Oh, that's nice. She that's says a nice yes. ending. Um and then Ga- um Gary and then Robbie is just trying to track down his dad. He's using a mobile phone in a library <gasps> and the library sh- library woman is not happy with him. I mean, were conditions made in those days when mobile phones first tried to... Because, you know, the rules that we are used mm. to today, like you, you turn your mobile phone off in the cinema, you don't use it at a petrol station. These are all things that have come over time. So I think the etiquette of using a mobile phone in the library hasn't quite got there just no, yet. No, this woman was on it. But she said, I've told you already, Oh, don't use the mobile phone here. How, wow. <laughs> she sounds powerful. <laughs> she was, Sonia loved her. I, I bet her. she blooming did. Are you a doctor? <laughs> I've never met someone who works in a library before. I've never met a librarian before. <laughs> uh, and the other episode was the 16th of May 2011, and it is Tommy Slater's christening. Oh, He's right. now back in the arms of Cat and Alfie. After that very dark mm. story. So it's after that storyline. The baby swap. Um, Jack is at the christening, <laughs> but Alfie's told him not to come, but he had to come. Why? Well, basically, Cat's all up for it. Cat's all, Cat is on Jack's side. <laughs> Okay. Um, and she says to Alfie, I think he's coming here to say goodbye to his child. And it's now becoming Tommy, is her reasoning for it. And there was a really weird thing um, where Jean, it seemed like Jean was being really possessive of Tommy. Like she was holding the baby and wouldn't let Cat hold the baby. Right. And she kept, she kept Tommy all to herself. It's really weird. Maybe she was just worried that it was going to get... No, because Cat gave a look. Yeah, but Jean might have been worried that she... You know, the baby might be taken again or something. Even no, it was by in cat. the Vic, like during the party, the after party. But then the Vic is the scene of the crime. That's true. But yeah, it was just, I can't remember this, that as being so like Jean being a bit possessive of Tommy. So I'm not mm. sure what that was hinting at. She's very protective, Jean, isn't she? Mm. So she might have just been from extension being protective. <laughs> but not only that, um, Kat then says to Alfie, I won't ever let anyone or anything come between us ever again my goodness maybe think about the words you say cat before you say them um and as they walk off obviously a black taxi turns up of course someone's back ronnie <gasps> she's back out of prison yeah roxy's taken her in a black taxi and they're both back Ooh. so yeah and also before i need to get this mention in abby abby branding mention is still going um she was cooking a meal to impress phil because her and jay are dating <laughs> You had told me this, but yes, go on. And the meal that she cooked was microwavable rice, which for some reason she thought that would impress Phil. She says, it's microwavable rice. <laughs> she said, that's, that's healthier. As well. <laughs> microwavable rice, it's healthier. And what would you have with rice? She well, you'd, you'd think steak. you'd have some kind of... Cu- oh, okay. Well done. He was an impress of that. Well, and no. Also, on the Raw, plate... Raw, like his head. <laughs> yeah. On the plate was baked beans. <laughs> Very odd mix. That's a meal, isn't it? I don't know. (laughs) Microwave or rice? Rice. Not just rice. (laughs) Because it's healthier. Mm. It was white rice. That's not that healthy, Abby. No. And she had an apron on as well. For for cook for basically warming up some beans. (laughs) Putting some steak into a, into a frying pan. I'm sorry, the frying pan could spit out some fat. So yeah. she's fair, fair the enough baked for that. Beans, Don't forget that Abby, in what, five years after that should happen, she works in the Queen Vic uh, kitchens. Yeah, that's under Aunt Babe. Oh, that's true, Aunt Babe. the homely cooking She skills. knows how to do trifle, doesn't she? <laughs> and then instantly smash it on the floor from anger. Well, thank you. Um, I know I'm having for tea tonight. <laughs> That steak. My Abby favorite. special. Abby that can go in the EastEnders cookbook that we're creating Abby slowly. Abby special, yeah. Put rice in microwave. 
put two minutes on the clock. Uh, right, so that's who's won previous weeks, but who's won this week? Abby. As, as I said, it's love week. So they've all been couples. All Ooh. couple. Well, couple, when one's a made-up couple, because there was flirting, so we just banged Ooh, it in. they're my favourite. So was it Bianu, which is Ben and Keanu? <laughs> yes. Janice, which was Jack and Janice. No. Cash, which was Cat and Kush. Yeah, second. Or Mex, which was Mel and Max. I, I want to call him Tex Max, but I can't think of a way of putting Tex in there. Tamsin Alfwaite is and, played by Mel. Tams, Tex Max. There you go. And she's the ex of Jack. Tex Max. There you go. <laughs> so, Bianu, Janice, Cash, and Tex Max. Who do you think came second? Cat and Kush. Because Bianu must come first. Cat and Kush came first. Ugh. With 60% of the vote, Cat and Kush won the week. Bianu came second with 22% of the vote. <laughs> Janice came third with 13%. And Tex Max came last. No one's really interested in Mel and Max. So Nor am I. They're on, exactly. They're on your team with 5% of the vote. Thank you again for everyone who voted Good. on our Twitter, our Instagram, and our Facebook group. A few tweets that we got concerning who won the week. We got one from uh, at Vin Cornelius who said, can I vote for none of them? No. You have well, to vote for someone. <laughs> You, well, I said it was okay, so I've, gi- I've given them permission. Uh, at Danielle, if you don't want to vote for someone, just don't vote. Well, no, it's, it's they're making a stand, aren't they? They're, they're almost oh, they're well, spoiling. They're well, spoiling. He should the... have put a list of a couple who he wanted to vote for. Then no, he doesn't want to vote for anyone. He, he well, doesn't believe in vote. love. Vincent doesn't believe You're in not love. Forcing then. Vincent to vote. Well, no, he's spoiling his votes. So he's spoiling it by saying, "I'm not voting for any of them." <laughs> He's gone into that booth and he's just put one big large cross over the whole form. Well, that's the good for anyone. Ones. No, it doesn't. That's not how democracy works, Vincent. <laughs> At Danielle featuring Max says, not Jack and Denise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too right. Yeah. And... At Sapphire Rainbow has said, I love Kat and want to see her happy and Kush seems to do that. Jack needs to get back with Mel and Denise needs someone nice and new. There you go. I still miss Denise and Kush. Do you? Yeah, I like them as a couple. They weren't given a chance. Okay, well, we had a question sent in from Born Slippy ninety six, right? Um, and I'd like you to answer it because they they took exception to you and your rant about Max on Twitter. <laughs> what rant? You said Max on screen for less than five seconds, and I'm oh, already yeah. swearing at the TV. <laughs> That's true. At Born Slippy has asked, I will love him forever and ever. This mm-hmm. is Max. If you had to pick who was worse out of the two brothers, though, who would it be? Obviously, I would say Jack. But um, they're on an equal kiln at the moment. But who would you say? Who's worse, Max or Jack? I would say Max because of his storylines since his return after his year break has destroyed his character a lot more than Jack because he's murdered and attempted murdered and burnt down a place and Mm. cheated on Carmel and made her lose her job. Uh, very so, serious all of a sudden well that's why he's worse than jack because jack's not really done much he's no, just annoying he's just, just a bit, yeah <laughs> fair enough fair enough there you go Where max is quite evil okay and he's horrible to rain and, 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 and the, annoying me and the evil kind of erupts every now and then and he can't really suppress it very mm. well so they need to do something a bit more useful with it other than make him a bit broody and moody i just need him to go okay fair enough sorry jake <laughs> goodness i've opened a can of worms here a couple of uh, messages on our facebook group about halfway's hat <gasps> Rob Innes says, I think it's a shame that they've got rid of it. It was a nice character quirk. You can wear it every now and then. Once a month, maybe. Okay. When he's not lost it. <laughs> You're very high opinions today. Uh, Cuz Doe has said, I'm glad he's lost. This is the hat. <laughs> I, I was getting flashbacks of Benny from Crossroads. Um, I think you have to be of a certain age to get that. Mm. I was not and agree. Okay, lovely. Um, and a couple of tweets we've had about Dinah's story, because that was pretty much the big story this week. Um, mm-hmm. At Jess Drake 32 said, I think Dinah is being selfish, expecting Karen to end her life. And at Hufflepuff Lock said, I thought the nurse would name Colin. But when he said Darren, my heart sank. That was about the uh, carer, yeah, the guy, the guy yeah. who would have helped. It would have been nice if Colin... Yeah, because Colin had, has but has No one really mentions. The only ones that know Colin is Dot and Kathy, really. Mm. But you think... And Sharon. He... He might be doing a bit of, you know, work. Hmm. His alter ego, the actor who plays him. I he... suppose it wouldn't be worth him coming just for Karen. Like, him and Karen don't really have a connection. No, if it was, it... like, Kathy. But it was nice to have a throw to the past. And, yeah, they could have done that. They could say, oh, hi, Colin. If hmm. he was in the cafe, he could have been like, oh, hi, Colin. And had a few, you know, moments. A bit like, hmm. you know, punk man. See, if um, they had Dinah introduced into the square, like, a few months ago, and had her interact with the characters a bit more, she could have met Kathy. And then Kathy could have mentioned Colin. Like, that then yeah. could have led to a Colin coming to chat, maybe. 
if well, that was happened. But, Karen... they, but they kept her solely with the Taylors, didn't they, really? So I guess. Karen could have gone to Dot, maybe, and got some... You Dot's know... an island. Well, yes, of course she is. Busy. Well, she's... Who's feeding her cat? Oh, I suppose it must be Sonia. Sonia. Yeah. Stuart? Do you think Dave the cat sleeps in Stuart's bed? Oh, I think so. Yeah. That's why Stuart's nice all of a sudden, because he's got he's cats got a to cat. calm him down. That's all you need, a cat. <laughs> That's what Kush's got, and he's calmed down a bit as well. <laughs> All you need is a cat. Yeah. Uh, thank you, as always, for your comments and your interaction with us. Uh, we really do appreciate it, and um, we, you know we love getting them from you all. You can email us, eastendersweekly at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at EastendersWeek. Our Instagram page is at EastendersWeeklyPodcast. Or search EastEnders Weekly Podcast on Facebook to find our group and join. Don't forget to vote on our awards. We've yes. had loads of people voting. I know, I'm actually surprised. Really overwhelmed. Um, I, I, said to ben, I said to Ben when we first put it up, I said, oh, if we get 50, that'd be nice. Uh, but we've surpassed that. Like, I know. Really have. So yeah. thank you. But if anyone hasn't voted, bit.ly slash EEW awards. You can find and it. And Bonnie Langford there. wants you to vote for her. Bonnie Langford so. has actively retweeted and asked people to vote for her. <laughs> So, we've got a back. So do it. And um, Callum tweeted us this week as well. Tony Clay. Yeah, Tony Clay yeah, tweeted us this hat. week. Yeah. And we've got a f- um, hello to Scott Marsden, who's following us. I know, that did shook. I was shaken. Yeah. <laughs> I was worried for my life. It was fantastic. So, yes, thank you ever so much. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed the show. Yes, and don't forget to vote. And we also have spoiler cast for next week's episodes. Yes, that's on Every YouTube. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes, on yes. on YouTube. And don't forget, you can listen to us on your favourite podcast app. And don't forget to review us and give us five stars if you so think we deserve it on iTunes. Goodbye and have a good week. Bye.